It is the day before Thanksgiving. Today is August 18th. Exactly, Sonia. It is November 18th because what happens today shows up in 90 days. The activities that you do today is going to determine what you put in your bank account the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Today, I wanted to make sure though we were talking about how do we talk about the market, what's happening in the market. I'm going to go to the same resource that I always go to that I want to encourage everybody to be looking at weekly to study it, be having conversations. And this is going to be uh, something you can find right there at SDMLS. So when you go into the SDMLS, you can click on Fast Stats. It'll take you to your Fast Stats. You can click on Monthly Indicators. And this is going to show you a recap of what's been happening right all the way through the end of last month. So as you can see, these are for detached homes. Are new listings up or down compared to last July? Someone shout it out. Down. Yeah, July of this year saw less homes going on the market than July of last year. Overall, year to date, we're only up 1.2%, okay? Closed sales, did we sell more homes this July as compared to last July? Down. Down, Down. Down. right. Now, the problem with the problem with not paying attention to your to the market every week or every month is you may be misinforming yourself or misinforming the consumer because right now everyone's talking about this number. Look at this year to date we've sold 19.5% more homes than this time previous. Now remember though, what was happening last January to July? Boom. Well, March 16th, the entire state was shut down. Real estate agents were deemed non-essential. And for a three-week period, we weren't even allowed to leave the house to show a property. We all know that the market stagnated in April and May of last year. So is it any surprise to you that year to date, we're up 19.5%? Your answer should be no, right? Your answer should be no. However, what's something to pay attention to is what's happening now? What's the trend now? Did we just play a lot of catch up in the spring compared to last year? And what's happening now? If we look at median sales price, of course, we all know median sales price is skyrocketed. It's up, you know, 20 to 22 percent on the year. Those are for single family homes. If we go into our condos, look at our condo market. Did we put more or less homes on the uh, condos and attached homes on the market this July compared to last July? Less, right? We have we had 18.3% less homes hit the market and only 1.8% more condo sales. Ladies and gentlemen, we are still in a seller's market. However, we are starting to see a bit of a shift. What I wanted to show you instead of that particular screen, which you can access on your own, was a little chart that I put together. And what I've been doing is I've been tracking the last 90 days. So can everyone see this on the screen? Yeah. yeah. Great. So I looked at May, June, and July. Do I need to make this bigger? Or can we see okay? We can see okay. Great. So look what happened in May. We had 26 new, 2,600 new listings go on the market, followed by 2,648 new listings going in the market in June and 2,698 new listings going in the market in July. Here's what that graph looks like. Let me, guys, let me ask you guys a question. Is inventory going up or down or staying stable? Stable. It is going up. Every month, every month, there's more and more and more listings hitting the market. How do you describe the basic laws of economics to your clients? 
The basic laws of economics is simply supply and demand. When supply is high and demand is low, which way does the market go? When supply is high and demand is low, which way does the market go? Down. When supply is low and demand is high, which way does the market go? Okay. So we are seeing some early indications in the last 90 days. Has supply gone up or down? Great. Here's the number of pending home sales. Look at the graph. Has it gone up or down? Down. Down. In July, we only had 2,255 pendings as compared to 2,461 pendings the month prior. That is a 10% drop, 9 to 10% drop in demand. Look at our July closings. Did it go up or down? In May, we saw 2185. In June, we saw 2474. In July, however, we saw 2283. In June, average sales price was 1.183 versus 1.157. These aren't dramatic changes, but they're noteworthy. They're noteworthy. And here's the best way to really talk about the market today. It's all about absorption rate. If you don't know what absorption rate is, please get out your pen and paper, write this down. This is a very important conversation to have when you're educating your clients. But absorption rate is the speed at which homes are consumed, right? The speed at which homes are purchased by consumers based on the rate the consumers are purchasing them. It's simply, it's simply, absorption rate is simply what's the, what's the inventory and what's the demand and how quickly, right, how quickly um, will the market be absorbed? In other words, we also call that months of supply. So if we look back in May, there were just 0.8 months supply, meaning if every single real estate agent from every single brand of real estate in San Diego County stopped putting homes on the market May 1st, if they just didn't put another home on the market at the rate at which they're being absorbed, every single home in San Diego County would be sold in just 0.8 months. So essentially three weeks. You guys think that's a hot seller's market? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. That is some of the lowest absorb that, that was one of the lowest absorption rates, right? The lowest months of supply we've ever seen in San Diego, ever. But look at this. In June, how many months of supply did we have? Oh, <laughs> right. And in July, how many months of supply do we have in July? One. Right. So is months of supply going up or down? Uh, okay. You guys, that's a 20% change in absorption rate. That's a 20% increase in months of supply. While it might seem pretty small, in just 90 days, we had a 20% increase. Do you think that's significant or noteworthy? It's both. It's significant and noteworthy. I think that was Stan who answered that question. Thank you, sir. What I find really interesting is this is very counterintuitive. Did rates go up or down during that 90 day period? Down. Down. My goodness, are you saying that homes <laughs> rates went down, which means somebody's monthly payment is now more affordable today. If they bought a million dollar house today versus a million dollar house in May, is their payment more or less today? Less. less. So wouldn't you think more people would want to buy homes? Yeah. I agree. That's not what's happening in San Diego in the last 90 days. Now, what we haven't determined yet, we'll be able to determine this 90 days from now, is, is this seasonality, right? Has everybody been pent up in place for 18 months or 15 months and everyone took the opportunity to go travel in June, July, and August? 
you know, and, and decided not to engage in the home buying process has the, has the resurgent of the, and, and the insert, right. The insurrection of the Delta variant caused people to take a pause. We don't know yet. I don't think anyone has a real prescription for that, but what we can definitively say is the market is starting to shift in the opposite direction than where it's been moving in the last 15 months. So when you're consulting a buyer, what's your dialogue? Does anyone want to be brave enough and stand in front of the camera and, and role play a quick conversation with the buyer? Ray Frazier, thank you for uh, thank you for volunteering. Absolutely. All right, Ray, you're the buyer. I'm the agent. Ray, thanks for taking the time to sit down and talk with me today about your home buying goals. I'm really excited for you. I am as well, Brian. Thanks so much for uh, for taking some time with me. You know, it's absolutely my pleasure. You see, Ray, I have a fundamental belief. When people get reliable information and a good education, they tend to make the very best decisions for themselves. Wouldn't you agree? I absolutely agree with that point. So the goal for my conversation today for the next 20, 30, 40 minutes is to make sure that I load you up with the most reliable information so you can make the very best decision for yourself regarding your real estate goals. Sound fair? That sounds fair. I appreciate that. Ray, I wanted to start off with the conversation of the state of the market. Okay. Now, there's lots of um, headlines out there and one-liners and, and, and little Zillow updates and things like this, but as your local real estate professional of choice, I wanted to be sure I gave you in real time what's happening with the real estate market. We don't wanna talk about what's been happening in the last year, the last two years. I wanna help you understand what's been happening in the last 90 days and how you as a home buyer have one of the um, better advantages than most home buyers have had in the last 15 months. May I explain? Please do. You see, if you're like everyone else, you've probably heard about bidding wars. Is that something that you've heard about, bidding wars? Yeah, I have. I heard they're, they're, uh, they're pretty intense right now in San Diego. Well, they have been pretty intense, and they have been pretty intense across the country. In fact, some national studies have, have revealed um, just, just three to four months ago that 75% of homes for sale experienced a multiple offer bidding war. So how I, was, how I was talking to a lot of our clients just three and four months ago was to really prepare them, you know, for the type of competition they're going to be up against. Now, I do need to tell you, it's still fiercely competitive here in San Diego, but I've got great news for you, Ray. Exciting. Tell me more. The, the market is starting to shift in your favor. It's right. ever so slight. It's ever so slight, but I believe that we're in a great window of opportunity for you to take advantage of a really fantastic market. You see, the most recent study indicated that in the last 90 days, that only 60% of homes for sale are experiencing a multiple offer bidding war, which means that less people are fighting over the homes, which make, puts you in a better position to get the home that you're looking for at the terms that work for you. Moreover, moreover, I want to tell you that we are up in July. We put more, there's been more active inventory that hit the market in July than there was in June than there was in May, right? And we're seeing more and more inventory hit the market. And better yet, we're seeing less and less competition for that home. Now, make no mistake, this is certainly still a market where you're going to have to move quickly, make decisions quickly, and be be prepared to compete. However, I gotta tell you, back in March, April of this year, the homes we put on the market had 25 offers, 15 offers, 18 offers. However, the properties we've been putting on the market in the last 60 days have been receiving maybe one to five offers. So you still have competition, and the best part is this, there's more available inventory for you to choose from. And most important, interest rates are lower. They, interest rates are five, you know, 5% lower, or actually 7% lower, right? Than where they were back in May. In May, they were just above 3%. Today, you know, they're sitting around 2.8%, which means on a monthly basis, the home you purchase is going to be that much more affordable. 
exciting. So Ray, what I'm looking forward to is learning more about what you're looking for in a purchase. How many bedrooms, how many baths, what location, what are the features and benefits that are most important to you? And as soon as we can build a perfect home profile, I'm looking forward to taking you out there, showing you homes, more homes than I've been able to show other clients in the past who we've successfully helped, and to helping you compete on a winning offer and locking in the historically low interest rates that'll give you the most affordable monthly payment that we've seen in months, if not years. Are you ready to get started? Let's get started. All right, guys, obviously I'm being a little bit hyped and pumped, but I wanted to give you an example of the types of conversation and presentations you wanna have when you're talking about the market. Now, who wants to role play being a seller? Is there any brave person in the room that wants to stand up front or hop on Zoom and do this with me? All right. Tim, Tim. Tim's coming up front. Tim Gallagher. You know why? It's because he's a fighting eagle. San Pasquale High School graduate. <laughs> Eagles, go fight, win. Ready? Yes. Tim, thank you for inviting me into your home today to talk about your real estate goals. I really appreciate it. Well, happy to have you here. Hey, Tim, after we take a quick tour of the home, I'd love to sit down and talk a little bit more about your timing, your real estate goals, and what's most important to you about your home sale. Sound fair? It does. Let's do it. And in doing so, I want to make sure that you understand one fundamental belief that I have. You see, when I, I believe when people get reliable information and a good education, they tend to make the very best decisions for themselves. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Great, so as I get to know your home better and know your goals better, I also wanna make sure that I deliver the most reliable information that helps you understand how you can do three things. And it's the three things that I find that the sellers most often want. They want to sell their home for the highest possible price with the fewest amount of hassles in the timeline that's most convenient for them. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Great. Fast forward. Tim, thanks for the tour of the home. I really appreciate it. I'd like to take a little moment to give you a kind of a state of the market so you really understand that when you put your home on the market, how you can position yourself to get the most amount of money. May I explain? Absolutely. Let's do it. Great. Tim, I bet one of the reasons you're putting your home on the market is you've heard that this is one of the best sellers market in history of San Diego. Is that one of the reasons? Absolutely. My neighbor just sold their house for top dollar. You know, I saw that. I know that's one of the big reasons that we sold. In fact, they broke a record. That was the most expensive home sold, you know, in Rolling Hills Ranch that, that we've ever seen. Uh, my goal is to make sure that we duplicate record-breaking sale. And I want to talk a little bit about how we might be able to do that and also talk about the timing of everything, okay? Sounds good. You see, we have been in a historically low, um, a historically uh, great seller's market. In fact, just 90 days ago, we had less than one month's worth of inventory on the market. Now, Tim, as a home seller, do you want more competition or less competition? More competition. Well, as a home seller, do you want there to be five other homes just like yours on the market, or do you want to be the only home on the market? I want to be the only home on the market. That's right. So if I was asked the question again, do you want more or less competition? My guess is you would want less competition. Isn't that right? You right. would want less homes competing against you on the market, correct? Right. Okay, great. See, just 90 days ago, that was the case. We had only 0.8 months worth of supply on the market, meaning the number of homes we had on the market compared to how many buyers were consuming them. In other words, if we stopped listing homes for sale back in May, within just three weeks, every single home in San Diego County would have been purchased. Isn't that insane? Yeah, that's nuts. It is nuts. And that's why people are calling it one of the best sellers market in history. Now, here's an important number to remember, Tim. It's the number three. We hold up your hand, the number three, right? Three months 
is when we have three months of standing inventory, that's when we are in a balanced market. It doesn't favor the seller and it doesn't favor the buyer. That means we have just the right amount of homes for sale to accommodate all the buyers that we have in the marketplace. You see, Tim, today, as of the end of July, we were sitting on just one month's worth of inventory. Whenever there's less than three months of inventory, we are still in a seller's market. Whenever we have more than three months of inventory, we are in a buyer's market. So I'm really glad that you called me today because we are still sitting in a very aggressive, very awesome seller's market with just one month worth of standing inventory. But you see, Tim, I'm here today to make sure that you don't miss your window of opportunity to get your home on the market. In the last 90 days, we've seen a 20% increase in supply and available supply. We went from having 0.8 months to just one month. Now that may not seem significant, but if we continue that trend, right? If we continue that trend over the next year, we're gonna have over two months worth of standing inventory on the market. And the more homes, Tim, that we have competing against you, the less likely you are to get top dollar. Does that make sense? So Tim, let's talk about your goals and your timing and what it's gonna take to get your home to market as soon as possible. So I can help you get the highest amount of money with the fewest amount of hassles in the fastest amount of time. How does that sound? Yeah, great. great. All right. And script. Tim, you're a great role play partner. So again, everybody, I'm going through it pretty fast. Obviously, in a real sit down conversation, I'm going to slow that down. I'm not going to preach at people. Right. I'm going to have more of a dialogue and a conversation about it. However, in our short amount of time here together, I wanted to make sure that we understood what's happening with the market. We have a slight shift in a seller's market with still historically low interest rates. And yet it's important for us to help press on people's motivation. Our job is to go out there and find qualified, motivated buyers and sellers. Once you've determined somebody's motivation, your job is to push your finger right on that motivation button and just press and press and press. And one way that you press is you, you press on the FOMO factor, the fear of missing out. You make sure those sellers understand that if they delay, if they delay in their decision-making, it could cost them thousands of dollars because of the shift that we're seeing in today's market. If they're a buyer, we want them to get out and look at properties now because there's more properties available now than there were 90 days ago. And if they delay, just like Jimmy said, the feds announced they're gonna slow down the purchasing of, of loans, which could cause interest rates to go up. I trust that adds value to all of your scripts and dialogues with your clients and your prospects, your referral base, your friends, your sphere, have these conversations, be, the local real estate economist of choice. Know your numbers. All right, Ray, back to you. Give Brian a round of applause. Let's talk a little bit more in detail about this. Who's read this book? Your hand? Do you have a copy of this book? Absolutely a fantastic read. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to read this book, I want to ask a question. What does this represent? What is it? Okay. Very early on in this book, it talks uh, on page 14, if you have a copy. This year is the, essentially the real estate cycle. January, December, summertime. Pretty normal, right? It also represents a shifting market. Here's what we typically know about a shifting market, is there's always a lag night. Okay. For example, this can be the, the seller's idea of a list price, right? We see it continue to drive up. Buyer demand is almost matching the list price. And by the time we peaked on that list price, what's happening? Exactly. Okay. There's the buyer demand, list price here. And by the time buyer demand is peaked, list price is still rising. We're in that potential lag measure and the numbers are starting to back this up, which speaks to the importance of making sure that we're using the data that Brian demonstrated to inform and educate our buyers and sellers. If you're not dealing with 16 competing offers and you're only competing with two, 
maybe don't come out the gate with a $60,000 uh, higher offer. Utilize an escalation clause. You need a copy of, of the one that, that we've been forwarding to everybody. It's worded perfectly and it's easy to explain. If you're sitting down with a seller, understand that we're seeing a slowdown in the market with more inventory creeping up. If the seller's expecting $100,000 above list price, it's important to use the data and maybe temper those expectations. It's also important, guys, what happens on a national level or a regional level always works slower than a local level, like clockwork, okay? So what's going on in your local market could, might, not be a little, uh, might not be the exact same as what you're seeing in San Diego. Here's the last thing that I wanna push about this, this graph. This also in shift, it talks about when the market starts to shift and we're seeing this play out in real time, okay? This blue line also represents the potential income in the market, okay? This represents the number of agents. So as we start to shift, and we see more closings that we're starting to see, what's happening to our agent count? It's going where? Way up. Way up. And it shows no signs of slowing down. 500,000 new licensees are expected nationally in 2022. That's massive. What's likely to happen to potential earning income in a shift? It's going to go down. That means more listings, or I'm sorry, less listings and less buyer opportunities, right? Less closed sales. What does that mean for competition? Guys, the, the energy sucks. What's it mean for competition? It goes up. It goes up. Would you say that this is a competitive real estate market? Yes. Which means that it is absolutely crucial that you're using this information to educate your buyers and sellers and position yourself as the go-to economist of choice. It is absolutely imperative that you arm yourself with the data, with the scripts, with a way to present information and a good education so that your clients can make the best decision for them. Okay? Right? You feel suited to go take care of your buyers and sellers and set expectations for what we're seeing in the market. Great. Questions? Here's a fun little tidbit as well. You guys know that there are 91 work days left in the year. I saw those eyes. 91 work days left in the year. Is that shocking to anybody? Fair enough. <laughs> All right, let me throw a little bit of a wrench in that. You know, there are six weeks left until the start of Q4. Six weeks left until the start of Q4. And once Q4 starts, we're working in 2022. Fair? Right? Here's what I love about that. If we look at the next six weeks as our opportunity to start carving out stake, finish 2021 strong, and set ourselves up for a record breaking 2022. It starts today. Success is not a marathon. It's a sprint fuel just long enough for habit to kick in. So if we can spend the next six weeks putting in the right habits to finish 2021 on a high note and start off 2022 having the best year of our career, what are those habits? What does that look like? That's a question. What are the habits that we need to focus on in the next six weeks before October 1? Tim. Making sure that I'm making contacts with friends and family and people in my database and having conversational real estate with all of them. Love it. How many a day? I'm supposed to be doing seven a day. Seven a day times five is 35 a week. And then there's supposed to be a couple days where I really push it to like, you know, 25 in that one day. Just like, okay. Let's scale this out. If you did 35 a week times six weeks, 210, 210, 210 contacts. It's called 200. You make 200 contacts in the next six weeks and having uh, purposeful real estate conversations. What does business look like at the end of the year and start of 2022? Plentiful. I love that. Plentiful. Somebody else, what's the habit? What habit do we need to drill home in the next six weeks? Tim. Time management. Time management. What's that look like? What are the tools that you need in place to make sure that that happens? So the resources. <laughs> what do you need to put in your calendar today to start working on time management and prioritizing your calendar? What's that? Already my calendar. So you're on your way. How are you going to uh, incorporate discipline? Then? Who's going to keep you accountable? Gen Diego is a great start. 
Uh, if San Diego doesn't have it in your calendar, confirm your calendar maybe the night before or the morning of. <clears throat> Heck of an accountability layer. What's another habit? Somebody else, give me one more. Attend training. Attend training. I love it. How often? As much as possible. Mm -hmm. Can't quantify as much as possible. Weekly. Once a week? Yes. Six trainings in the next six weeks. Yes. What does 2022 look like? Blown up, man. Blown up. <laughs> okay. Think about this. We have six weeks to sprint to a 91 day finish line. Okay? What does your, your business, what does your, your family life look like? What does your career look like if you can spend the next six weeks putting in the habits that are going to set you, you up for an amazing 2022? 